workshops in and out all summer long. So we're going to have you join a Google Classroom today for Tenco Summer. If you miss a workshop, you will have to go in there, watch the video, and then there will be a quiz at the end. There's going to be a quiz for everybody if you're here in person and if you do it virtually. Um, so you'll have to complete that quiz, and that's the evidence that we submit to Tenco to prove that you did what you needed to do for that workshop, okay? So the way the grant works is that we are required to address certain things. One of them being orientation. Like, we have to give you an orientation. So that's why it was mandatory today in one way or the other. Uh, it's kind of the same thing if you've been in this a couple years that we do. Um, if you are new this year, we get this grant. This is the third year because Mount Olivet is a high poverty area. All right, that's how we qualify. If you don't live in Mount Olivet, it was a struggle to get you approved this year because they got very strict on their requirements. Um, some of you are still floating out there not approved. We sent a ton more paperwork down to Kelsey at Tenco yesterday. We're at their mercy. So once it goes out of us to them, like we just have to wait. So if you're still in limbo, I think there's probably three or four of you in here. We try, we talk to them every day. I told the boys that were here yesterday, if y'all knew the amount of paperwork that goes into getting you a paycheck, you would probably quit if you had to do it yourself. It's horrible. But this is a federal grant, which means it's federal money, and they get audited, and they check every single bit of paperwork. So we've had you sign multiple times for that reason. We have to keep sending stuff down to them. Um, they are just, they have to make sure everything is accounted for and it follows every guideline they have to follow because they not only report to the state government, but they report to the federal government. So everything has to be like as perfect as it can be and it's a headache and a hassle, but that's just part of it. Um, just like last year, there are workshops, but they limited them. Last year we had to do eight. This year there are four, okay? Good and bad behind that. Another thing they limited this year was the amount of money we could give you as rewards for attending. This year they're only letting us do $25 per workshop. So, if there's four, how much money will you get per workshop? $25 each. Four workshops, $100, thank you. All right, so there will be four. Um, if you get a positive evaluation at the end of your work experience, you will still get the $100 bonus. And we'll go over that in just a second about what that'll take. We do not have gift cards today because on top of all the Tinko stuff that's been added to our crazy summer, the school bank account got hacked last week. For Miss Tracy, that's a financial nightmare. You all have no clue what that means when you're talking about an organization this big. So that means every debit card had to be canceled, every check had to be canceled, the account had to be closed, it had to be reopened, and the new one is not active yet. So we couldn't go buy debit cards or credit gift cards for you all until we get all that open. It's gonna take a couple weeks, okay? Might even be like July 1st, just because that's the new fiscal year and it rolls over and it just make it easier if we wait until then at this point. We will get them to you though, I promise, okay? It's gonna take a little bit longer. Um, if you have been in the board office and we look a little flustered, guys, it, this, it's been crazy, okay? Crazy. Plus we have all of you. Yeah, yeah. So um, we will do it, it's just a total this year. Last year we were able to give you $500. You got $50 for eight workshops and a $100 bonus. This year they took it back down. We don't know why. They also tried to drop your pay. Last year was $8, and when we wrote the grant, and even on your paperwork, this year they were only gonna let us give you $7.50 an hour. But Mr. Holbrook um, fought and fought and fought with the board, and he's like, it's not fair. I can't expect them to come back for less money for the ones that are repeat. So he got that part fixed, but we couldn't adjust the gift card amount. So, but we don't have to have you come as many times. <coughs> Um, we're going to go over your timesheet. We take care of your timesheets only because if we don't do that right, then you won't get paid. 
So we have to make sure, like, if you work a five-hour day, there's a 30-minute lunch. Like, all that, guys, I cannot. I had to argue all, all day for two days. you got to stop. Or there's no Harvey tomorrow. Bring it in. <laughs> and no, I'm not giving Harvey. Timesheets. It's, we're just going to do them. We'll have you come up and sign. We'll talk to your supervisor to verify. Not that we don't trust you, but we don't trust you. Okay? Love you to death. You will mess them up. It's easier for us to do it. Do it once. Miss Tracy's probably already had you sign um, future timesheets. That way, if you work off site, we don't have to try to track you down because that's too hard to find us. So we try to take care of that in advance. Okay. Google Classroom. Whether you are here today or you are not, virtually, I need you to get the Google Classroom app on your phone. Okay? And then I need you to join this class code because this is where everything's going to be posted, including your documentation that you were here today.
job site or your supervisor or anybody that you encounter, customers, wherever you work, it doesn't matter. Your initiative. So you look for things to do. I told our crew here yesterday, Mr. Holbrook was like, you know, we don't have time to keep you busy because we all have our own jobs. So it's very nice when somebody's like, okay, that needs to be done. I'm just going to go do it. Is it okay if I do it? So be open and look for stuff, but be smart enough to keep yourself busy. Okay, downtime gets you in trouble. Being with your friends gets you in trouble. Just find something to do. There's always something to do everywhere. Um, courteous, so be nice and considerate of others. Your attitude towards constructive criticism. If somebody tells you a better way to do something or makes a suggestion, please don't get smart with them. Please accept it and be like, okay, never thought about that. We worked on scheduling a couple weeks ago, and Mr. Thomas always helps, and after the first couple days, we just walk away because we can't figure stuff out. But it needs a third set of eyes to come in just to look at it, and they're like, hey, have you ever thought about doing this? Because they're constructively criticizing what we have been doing, and that needed to happen, that there's a better way to do it. If you don't know how to do something, please ask. Please, there are no stupid questions. You're in these experiences to learn, okay? Braden, I'm going to throw you under the bus for a minute. Braden had trouble the other day doing what? Starting a? Push mower. Push mower. <laughs> That's not fun. Okay, I bet half of the people in this room couldn't go start a push mower. All right, fine. I didn't have a problem doing it. <laughs> so, he had to get help to start the push mower because it was one simple thing, wasn't it? That yeah. wasn't right. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Because Holbrook would have gone out there and chewed his head off if it didn't get done. So he had to figure out how to do it. But yes, please ask, okay? Don't be embarrassed. Don't feel stupid. That's why you're here, is to learn, or wherever you are. Please ask questions. Um, your knowledge of your job, the accuracy of your work. Don't, don't, if they ask you to go wash a table, please do it correctly. If they ask you to weed eat, go do it correctly. Don't do a job that you wouldn't be proud of, all right? Because you represent whoever you're working for and yourself. <clears throat> and a lot of these lead to other job opportunities. And a lot of your work here, like when people call and they need help for other jobs out in the community, we're saying, oh, hey, he worked this summer. He was really good at that. That's who we should send. So please always remember that. Um, your work habits. So all these things they judge you on, still on this page too. Like you concentrate, you seldom waste time. Your adaptability, how quickly you are willing to learn something. Your appearance, like always be neat and presentable because no matter where you are, I guarantee you see outside community people. And I guarantee you see other people, not just, I don't think anybody's isolated in a room somewhere. Not anymore. Nope. <laughs> Punctuality, you need to be on time. And depend about dependability. If they ask you to do something, they don't have to come 27 times and check on you. They know it's going to get done. All right? Those go out to them. They fill those out. They bring those back to us. Satisfactory is worth a $100 gift card at the end of the experience. Okay? Um, these are your time sheets. Miss Tracy has all the time periods already set up. So some of them will span, like this next one is a little bit more than two weeks. So that check might be a little bit more. All right, we've already had you probably sign. This is where she keeps track of your 240 hours. Once you run out of 240 hours, that's when we have to go ask approval for you to work more. But they do let us do that a lot of times, okay? Okay, we'll fill those out in just a minute. Welcome to the Job Genius Career Exploration Series, brought to you by Express Employment Professionals. If you watch the other videos in the series, then you already know how to set career goals, find job opportunities, write a winning resume, prepare for a job interview, and get ready for the first day of your new job. But there's one more super important topic that we need to cover, and that's soft skills. So what are soft skills? And what's the difference between soft skills and hard skills? Well, hard skills are things that can be easily measured, like math, the number of words you can type per minute, or how well you know a certain software program. 
These skills are often the kinds of skills that are included as job requirements. And soft skills, they're a little harder to define. Soft skills are all about integrating well with team members. Think of soft skills as people or relationship skills. They say that hard skills may help you get the job, but soft skills will help you get along and get ahead in the job. In fact, more and more hiring managers are looking for candidates with strong soft skills right from the start. Because a lack of soft skills can negatively impact communication and the whole work atmosphere. Bottom line, a good balance of both hard skills and soft skills will increase your chances of both getting the job and getting ahead in the job. By now, you're probably asking yourself, what are these nebulous soft skills that are so important and yet so hard to define? Well, if you ask 10 hiring managers, you'll probably get 10 different answers. Different bosses look for different traits based on the work environment and their own personal style. So we'll focus on the soft skills that come up most often on hiring managers' wish list. Developing soft skills is accomplished with awareness and practice. It takes a commitment to adjusting your mindset, your way of looking at how you fit into the relationship dynamics of your work environment. Today, we'll take a look at five of the most sought after soft skills and some tips to develop them. They are communication skills, being a team player, a strong work ethic, being flexible, and a positive attitude. So let's get the ball rolling with communication skills. Communication skills are the most sought after soft skill by bosses and hiring managers. You may not realize it, but that one ability covers a lot of ground. Think about it for a second. Communication is about listening first, how you express yourself, the ability to persuade others, your presentation style, and calmly explaining what you need. So first, let's talk about how to be a good listener. In the professional world, they call it active listening. We all know life is full of interruptions. It seems like there are always multiple distractions competing for our attention. I get it. That's why it's so important to put all that aside and focus your attention when someone speaks to you. Being a good listener begins with good eye contact. That lets the speaker know they have your full attention. Do your best not to interrupt with questions or comments until the person speaking has come to a stop. And be conscious of the message your body language is sending. I'll show you what I mean. I'll play the director, and Chris will play me. Hey Chris, I wanted to talk to you about next week's booking. The client changed the time and location. I'll get you the address tomorrow, but you'll have to be there at 8 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. I wanted to thank you for being flexible. We'll talk later. See how your body can say a lot, even if you don't speak a single word? If this had been a real situation, do you think right about now the director would be thinking about someone to replace Chris? It wouldn't surprise me. Always be mindful that your body language is sending a message, whether positive or negative. So make good eye contact and actively listen with the intent of really hearing the message to develop understanding and clarity. Let's talk about clarity. We all interpret information differently. What may mean one thing to one person could mean something entirely different to another. So what can you do? If you're on the receiving end of communication, the best way to seek clarity is to ask questions. Don't guess or assume, just ask. Trust me, people won't think less of you just because you ask a question. As a matter of fact, studies show that managers actually think people who ask questions are smarter than people who don't. The reason? They say people who ask questions show they value the boss's expertise. So ask away. Remember, be an active listener to minimize the number of questions. This will save time for you and your boss. It's also okay to ask for the things you need to get your job done. For example, ask your boss when he or she needs the assignment completed. If you already have too much on your plate, ask your boss which of the tasks is the most important to complete first. Doing this shows your boss that you're willing to be proactive in order to keep your work moving forward. And when it comes to time off work, communication is critical. Don't wait until the last minute. Be sure to request time off well in advance to give your boss plenty of time to cover your absence. This goes for vacation time as well as doctor appointments and other personal time. Okay, now you have an idea of how to be a good communicator. The next soft skill we'll talk about is being a good team player. You know, there's really no job that doesn't involve working with other people, at least in some capacity. Like the old saying goes, you need to learn to work and play well with others. No doubt, working on a team can be a challenge but being a good team player will help you get ahead in your career. 
when you find yourself in a team situation on the job, keep those things in mind. Know the goal and know your role. It's important to understand the objective of your team and the part you play in achieving its goal. It's also important to understand the responsibilities of the team members and how you interact with them to meet your goal. Every team is made of different personalities, so it's important to remember that each person has their own unique work style. Just because someone's style is different than yours doesn't mean it's wrong. Learn to appreciate different viewpoints and be open to altering your point of view. Keeping an open mind and being receptive to a different way of doing things will not only make you a great team player, it'll also pave the way for your team's success. If you think someone on the team isn't pulling their weight, it may be due to a lack of experience or knowledge. They may lack confidence in their ability. Don't waste your energy worrying about who's doing their fair share of the work. Focus on your responsibilities first. If you think you can take on additional duties or help someone who seems to be struggling, approach your team leader and offer to help. Show that you're a strong team player and who knows, you may make the move from team player to team leader in no time. The next soft skill on our list of highly sought traits is having a strong work ethic. So what exactly is a work ethic? Well, it's loosely defined as a set of values based on self-discipline and dedication to your work. It involves perseverance, focus, meeting deadlines, and doing the job right. Perseverance is the ability to stick to a task and see it through to completion. Developing perseverance is like training to run a race. It's working toward a goal, failing, getting back up, and trying again until you succeed. Also crucial to developing strong work ethic is focus. Do your best to eliminate distractions. Put your phone away. Turn off social media and email notifications. Once you've done your best to eliminate distractions, set a specific amount of time to work on a task. Then get in the zone. The next aspect of developing your work ethic is meeting deadlines, also called do it now. And that means don't procrastinate. It's been said that sometimes later becomes never. So do yourself and your career a favor and get it done. But hold on a minute. You won't do yourself any favors if you get the job done, but don't get it done right. It's a matter of quality over quantity. After all, you may get that report done quickly, but if it's full of typos and grammatical errors, that's just not gonna look good. Or say you built a beautiful piece of furniture, but the legs are wobbly and uneven. It may look good, but it's just not really functional. To get the job done right, you have to allow time to get the work done and then allow a bit more time to review and refine. So work to develop your perseverance and focus. Do the job now and do the job right and you'll cultivate a strong work ethic that will appeal to any employer. The next soft skill we'll talk about is flexibility. Flexibility is the willingness to respond to changing circumstances. Being flexible makes you a more valuable employee and it opens you up to learning new things which could ultimately lead to greater opportunity. Keep in mind, it's not necessary to know exactly how to do the new task like an expert, but your willingness to accept new responsibility and learn different things will elevate your status in the eyes of your leaders. Step outside of your comfort zone and don't let rigid habits bring you crashing down. Last on our list of highly sought soft skills is a positive attitude. It is said that there are a lot of things you can't change like other people and some situations at work, but there's one thing you're always in control of, and that's your attitude. There are many benefits to maintaining a positive attitude. It will improve your relationships both at work and in your personal life. It will help your chances of success. You'll be happier and make better decisions. And studies show that people with a positive attitude actually live longer than grumpy, grouchy people. There's an old saying, laugh and the world will laugh with you, cry and you cry alone. And that's pretty much true because people gravitate toward positivity. Now I know it's not always easy to keep a sunny disposition, but there are some things you can do to help create and maintain a positive attitude. For instance, don't wait for someone or something to make you happy. When you choose to have a positive attitude, good things will happen. Happiness is a frame of mind, not a situation, and it rubs off on the people around you. Practice positive self-talk. In other words, psych yourself up. Use that little voice inside your head to encourage yourself and talk yourself through tough situations. Tell yourself things like, I got this, I can do it, things are gonna be fine. And finally, do your best to cut out complaining. 
When you complain, you're really just putting out negative energy that doesn't help you or your coworkers. And no one likes to be around someone like that. Instead of complaining, focus on offering possible solutions. And in cases in which you can't do anything about the situation, it's best to say nothing and accept the fact that there are some things you just can't change. Well, there's just one more short subject to cover before we wrap things up. Okay, it's not really a soft skill, but it will drastically affect the way you're perceived in your workplace. It's a little thing, literally speaking, but it's often the source of major controversy. And that little thing is your cell phone. Our phones are part of our everyday lives. There are constant companions or linked friends, family, the world. But at work, they can be seen as a distraction, a time waster and a productivity killer. Many companies have policies in place that state when and where employees may use their personal phones. Always know the policy before you whip out that mobile phone. And if you're allowed to have your phone on the job, use good judgment on when and where to use it. With that in mind, here are a few workplace phone tips we gathered from bosses and managers. Number one, at work, always give 100% of your attention to a person, boss, or coworker who's speaking. Never answer a call or text when you're in a conversation with someone else. That's completely disrespectful to the person who needs your attention. If you work around others, set your phone to silent or vibrate. If you need to answer or make a personal phone call, find some place where you won't be a distraction, like a break room. Hint, that place should never be a restroom. Avoid being distracted by every notification that comes your way. Place and keep your phone face down or out of sight, like in a locker, drawer, or purse. You can catch up on your texts and calls during your break or after work. When you're on the job, your first priority should be work. You'll gain respect when you show your boss that you're engaged in your work and not easily distracted. Well, that's gonna do it for soft skills in the workplace, but it's by no means the be all end all list of soft skills that will help you succeed in the workplace and in life. The more time you spend on the job, the more you'll figure out which soft skills will help you most on your path to growth and success. You're in this for the long run. So keep learning, keep asking questions, and keep developing the skills that will get you to the place you want to be. Thanks for watching. The Job Genius Education Series is presented by Express. Okay, guys, so basics, you all know most of that. I know it's like an overview. But when we go to meetings, the most important thing that we hear is most places that hire you can you to do what they want you to do like you don't have to know how to be an electrician to work for an electrician if you're a good employee they can train you those things they need you to be there and be on time and be respectful and be willing to learn and to listen and the rest falls into place if you have all that stuff in order you're gonna be fine okay so please just remember that all right anytime we ask you to do anything in your folder if we do not hand you a blue ink pen refuse to write in it does anybody know why they make us do everything in blue? Because it's, a, remember, it's federal money, lots of federal money, it's a federal grant. They get audited. If they see blue ink, they know it's not a copy. They have the original, okay? So we have to send everything down to them in blue. That way they know it's you actually signing and filling it out or us. So find this page. These are your four workshops where we're going to keep track. <laughs> Please print your name at the top if you haven't already. This is workshop one. Um, it covered two areas that we were required to cover, which is orientation and soft skills training. Yes, you were in attendance, but we're not going to fill out that other part until we actually get your gift card to you, okay? So... Ms. Tracy and I, when you come in to get your gift card or the day that we have you signed for it, we'll go back and initial this and have you put it there. But you were here, you were in attendance. All right? Orientation slash soft skills. I can make it bigger.